Sometimes I forget like how big you are. I want to uh, just to review something quickly so everyone gets it right. Okay. Um, Jesus. You have to know who Jesus is. On that test, I asked a question. If you were explaining to a Muslim who Jesus was, because a Muslim thinks that. Jesus is just a good guy, another prophet, and that Muhammad is the greater prophet. What would you say to a Muslim? Who is Jesus? Who is he? So. Well, didn't you say that um, Jesus revealed himself to God, whereas Muhammad didn't? So. That's right. But, okay, we're going to explain the difference between Jesus and Muhammad. And who is Jesus? Jesus is, Jesus is who? You said he's the son of God, okay? Jesus, okay? Son of God, okay? Son of God who became man. Okay, I want you to write this in your notebooks, okay? So, son of God. This is the six. This is the six. Son of God, okay? Who became man, okay? while remaining God, okay? That is the important thing, okay? The Son of God who became man, okay? The Son of God who became man, okay? While remaining God, okay? Jesus is the second person of the Trinity. Okay. And because he's the second person of the Trinity, that means he always existed as pure spirit. Because three persons of the Trinity are pure spirit. Okay. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Pure spirit. No material in, in the Trinity. Okay. No matter in the Trinity. Okay. Matter is a limiting matter. It wouldn't be infinite in God, in eternal if they had any matter. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are pure spirit. Jesus is the second person of the Trinity, the, the eternally begotten of the Father. Okay? So, okay? The eternally begotten, okay? not created, okay? eternally begotten of the Father. The Father eternally begets the Son, knowing himself perfectly. Okay? So, Now, Jesus is both God and man. Okay? God and man. And Jesus has, Jesus is, okay, is one person, yes? A divine person. A divine person, okay. Jesus is one person. She got it. One person. Okay. A divine person. Okay. So what do you say? A divine, a divine person. Okay. He's a divine person. He's the second person of the Trinity. Okay. He's the second person of the Trinity. That's who Jesus is. The second person of the Trinity. Okay. Yes? So what do you say to people? Oh, hold up. Wait, wait. wait. Well, let me finish my explanation. Oh, just, so, just so you get this. Okay. So Jesus is one divine, one person. He's a divine person. But Jesus has. Put this in your notebook. No, I had it down. Good. Okay. Okay. So, but he has. Jesus has two natures. Okay. He's one person, divine. Two natures. Okay. A divine nature. Because he's a divine person, that makes sense, okay? He's got a divine nature. That means he's eternal, all knowing, all loving, all merciful, okay? All knowing, loving, merciful, whatever, okay? 
divine nature. And second, he has a human nature. Okay? The human nature. The divine nature is infinite. Okay? Infinite. Because being divine means you're infinite and eternal. No beginning, no end. Okay? The human nature is finite. Okay? Finite. I am ITE. Okay? What makes up a human nature in us? What is it that makes up a human nature? Now, what is it that makes up a human nature? It has to be have free will. That's part of it. Okay. Besides the spiritual part of us, we have what? We have a human body and a human soul. Okay. So, human nature, okay, okay, body and soul, body and soul. <coughs> Jesus had a human body, a finite human body, able to suffer with. That's why he took a human body to be able to offer the suffering on the cross for us, and a human soul, and the human soul. A mind and a will. Okay. He has a human mind and a human will. But with his divine nature, okay, he has a divine mind and a divine will. So, with his divine nature, a divine nature, a divine mind. And a divine will. He's just no ordinary person. This is a divine person. Muhammad claims to be the greater prophet than Jesus. Well, Muhammad's just a man. He never claimed to be God. Jesus is God. Pure and simple. He's God. So what? Oh, we yes. So what made what made Muhammad, Jeep like God like? Like I don't understand. He wasn't God like. Well, what just, makes the why do they say why do they say he's God like? Well, they say he is God's prophet. He is Allah's prophet. He is the prophet that came to tell us the truth about Allah. But why? That's, they, that's what they say. Why did they believe him? Like, what did he do yeah. to make them believe? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He performed no miracles. He just put forth this teaching and people accepted it. It was, some historians think it was simplified Christianity, in, in a sense. Muhammad, we think, was an Arian. Arius was the, the, the heretic who said that Jesus was just a creature. He was just, just a good man. He wasn't God. Therefore, he denied the Trinity. And this Arianism was floating around the Middle East for hundreds of years. Muhammad probably picked up on this. He claimed to have a revelation from, from an angel. Uh, St. Paul tells us uh, Satan can disguise himself as an angel of light. If he did, in fact, have a revelation of an angel, that he was the main prophet and Jesus was just a minor prophet, and Jesus was just a good man and he wasn't God, then that was a revelation from a demonic angel, not a true angel. I don't know. We have to, we'll find that out on the other side, so to speak, of, of our finite existence, okay? But, um, yeah, Mohammed, the, the, the Islam was very appealing to people because all you had to do was, um, you know, worship the one God, Allah. You didn't have this, this trinity of three persons. And, uh, you know, this is, this is not the, the easiest thing to accept. I mean, uh, you have to have faith that Jesus is both God and man. And to come along and say, well, Jesus was just a good man. He's not God. He denied the Trinity. That's what Muhammad did. I'm the, the major prophet, uh, the final prophet. Jesus was just a prophet. The Muslims do not believe that Jesus died on the cross. Did I mention that? Okay, the Muslims, because Jesus was a prophet, they regard him as a prophet, they say Jesus did not die on the cross. God took the face of Jesus and put it on Judas, and Judas died on the cross. That's what they believe. Yes. So Muhammad did make miracles happen. 
No, Muhammad, he performed no miracles, never claimed to perform miracles, never claimed to be the son of God. He just claimed to be, I'm, I'm the prophet of Allah, God. And um, Jesus was just a prophet who came before me to prepare the way for me, the main prophet. But Jesus is just a man. Jesus is not God. He's not the son of God. But because he was a prophet, they believe a true prophet from Allah, God, okay, uh, he wouldn't die on the cross. God wouldn't, Allah would not allow him to die on the cross. So he put the face of Jesus on Judas. It was Judas who was crucified, not Jesus Christ. Well, that means that they don't have a redeemer. The people of Islam do not have a redeemer. No one to save them from their sins. That's a good way to convert a Muslim is to say, do you have do you have a savior? No, we don't have a savior. We just have the prophet Muhammad. Another good thing, I just, I think I shared this with you. I heard a talk on, on, uh, on Catholic radio. Uh, what seems to be persuasive to the to Muslims is Jesus' is teaching, love your enemies. Because according to Islam, if you're an enemy of Islam, well, you can be killed. The idea of loving your enemies is, is not uh, part of the Muslim mentality. If you're an enemy, you're, you, know, you engage in jihad against the enemy. Now you kill the enemy, and then you, you get to heaven. You know, and you, you cut off their heads if they don't accept Islam, okay? convert or die. There is, there is um, justification in the, the Quran for this, which makes us very different. Never, when you read in, in the Christian Bible, the Christian scriptures, Jesus teaching, you know, tell people to convert or die. We, we never have done that. Okay? It has to be a freely chosen act by someone to convert. Yes? So, um, do Muslims believe that Jesus performed miracles? Because, I mean, like, obviously he did. So wouldn't it make more sense like if they believed in Jesus and that he was a good guy, that he was just like a minor prophet, why would they think the minor prophet did miracles, but the main prophet didn't? Um, well, they, they don't believe that Muhammad ever claimed to perform miracles. Yeah, I know. But yeah. I'm saying like, how come like a minor prophet could do miracles, but the major didn't? No, I don't know if the, the um, I don't think in the Quran it says anything about Jesus performing miracles, to my knowledge. So, um, you know, maybe maybe they would accept the fact that that God works some some healings through Jesus as a prophet, but that's as far as they would go. I don't know. I I, I never asked a Muslim that, and that's that's the point. I just never uh, looked into. I should. I have a, a teaching on Islam. I could look that up and try to find out an answer. What have you asked um, Muslims when you talk to them? Well, I've asked them about you know Jesus being the savior. That's how I learned. I, and I, I never knew until about maybe 10 years ago, I happened to run into a Muslim when I was at the University of Dayton in studies, and, um, and he, he said, well, Jesus did not die on the cross. And I said, what did you see that? He said, oh, no. Oh, no. God put, put the face of Judas on him because he was a prophet. God would not have allowed him. Allah would not have allowed a prophet to die on the cross. I said, well, no. That's, we believe Jesus died on the cross. That's how he saved us. He redeemed us. The Muslims don't believe this. Did you say right? So, no. How many people have you actually converted? Just got right How many people have I converted? Well, a, num a number of folks I've I've brought into the faith. Okay, after they're I invite them to, to study the faith, and, and they'll they'll listen. And I have a class I'm teaching right now on Tuesday nights, a tour of the faith class. I invite people to come. But mostly it's Catholics. They don't know their faith better. Some are non-Catholics. Uh, but I've, I've converted, I've brought it to the faith uh, Buddhists and not, no Muslims, though. No, I've never had Muslims in, in, my, in my class. Okay. It's, uh, Muslims are usually pretty like, strong about their faith. Well, they, they may be, uh, it depends, okay. A lot of them are, are uh, getting Americanized, Europeanized, and um, maybe that don't have uh, a strong faith in their Islamic faith as, as you know, they did once in their countries, yes. What's the difference between Catholicism and Jehovah's Witnesses? 
Jehovah's Witnesses. The Jehovah's Witnesses are not Christians, really. Jehovah's Witnesses, they, no, they don't believe that Jesus is God. They, Jehovah's Witnesses do not believe Jesus is God. The, the, the Jehovah's Witnesses, the Jehovah's Witnesses uh, hold that, in fact, in John's Gospel, they changed John's Gospel. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was a God. A God. But like all of us are gods, in, in a sense. Uh, so, yeah, Jehovah's Witnesses, properly speaking, are not are not Christians. They they claim to be, and many of them are are former Catholics who never knew their faith too well. Okay. Um, anyway, anyway, no, I tried to convert Jehovah's Witnesses, but uh, so wait, when they come to the door, they, you just, you just oh, I'll, I'll invite them in. My mother used to invite them in, and, and they tell you open up your Bible, and then we show them things that that are true about Jesus that they never considered because they only know certain verses of the Bible. And Isn't that the same most of them are, are, like I said, former Catholics who never knew their faith. Um, isn't that like the same with Lutherans? Like, don't they have like a different Bible? Like they took the Bible and like, kind of like took stuff out? Like well, they, they removed some books yeah. out of the Bible. Uh, Martin Luther did because he did disagree with some of the teachings. Uh, Jehovah's Witnesses are, are not Christians. They, this was something that was invented by someone a hundred and some years ago. I have some literature on it I could, I could bring it in, but... Don't um, you think Martin Luther had like a good idea, though, like considering that like we were selling indulgences and everything like that, do you think he kind of had good reasoning for separating? At the time. Not a good reason for separating, no. I mean, to, to object to an abuse of a practice is one thing, but to uh, reject uh, the faith and, and many, many doctrines of the faith, no, it is not a good idea, okay? Um, well, I mean, like, you could, like, kind of, like, not, like, I don't not agree with it, but I mean, like, he kind of, like... You could be sympathetic to some of his objections. Yeah, you could, but uh, he was very stubborn, and uh, I should bring you in uh, a recording made by a former Lutheran and let you listen to Martin Luther's teachings, because while he objected to a few good things, uh, he was he was very much off on a number of things and very belligerent and self-willed. Uh, maybe I'll do that someday. I have an excellent sure. talk by him quoting Luther. So it's, it's all quotes from Martin Luther's writings, okay? But today, yes. I just said, I'm sorry. Um, are, can we like learn more about like other religions and what they think yeah, so we can like, like but that's compare not, and contrast? But like it kind of goes to the that's, apologetics. That's later on. Oh, yeah. so we will do that? Yeah, but, okay. but I have to get through some other things like angels. Yes. We're going to learn about angels. We're going to learn about Are demons. demons? <laughs> angels, well, uh, angels and demons. they're more interesting than angels. Well, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about demons, and we keep too. Uh, the movie we don't want to come out soon. Is yes. that like a sin to go see that movie? Annabelle. What? Annabelle. Ouija. 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 I'm, I'm not about. familiar with this movie. Uh, There's four movies. Uh, what's it about? I think like, 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 yeah, like if you see a movie about like people doing Ouija boards, is that a sin? Yes. Well, supporting. I, I just want to like know. I wouldn't. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't go see movies about people playing with Ouija boards because uh, you open yourself to the demonic by doing that. Uh, the, the 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 movie, or actually the book. And the movie The Exorcist was based upon a true story. It was not a girl, it was a boy. He was playing with a Ouija board. He opened himself up to demonic possession. And um, if I can get my, my videotape on it, it was, it was good because it, it tells the story of the, the, the priest who went to assist the priest who did the exorcism. Okay. And he tells the story of how. Um, uh, some people said, oh, the, you know, this, this story, the exorcist can be explained with this boy, just, you know, psychological dysfunction. And this film interviewed the priest who accompanied, he wasn't a priest at the time, he was a seminarian. Uh, the priest got him out of bed one morning. And he said, come with me. He didn't know where he was going. Okay. He, he went to perform this exorcism. He accompanied the priest to perform the exorcism. He said, I saw writing on the stomach of the boy help me. I saw him rise off the bed, levitate. Okay. He said, this was not a psychological 
dysfunction. See, this was demonic possession. I saw it with my own eyes. So, yes. yes. Um, What's it like, like being possessed? Is that unpleasant, or kind of just unconscious? <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that. Okay. Okay. You know, I want you to look at. The, the, she's your. I'm talking about question. angels. Okay. okay. You no, know, I know, but it's a serious. Question. Like, so if you what? even watch the movie of it, you like open yourself up, or I thought. Well, I I'd be, I be, I would not go to see a movie where you know like people are playing with Ouija boards, and no, no, because this, this <laughs> um, is um, for what end? What purpose are you going? I mean, this, this is really no, no, no. Yeah. Um, so I encourage you to Well, I would go see the movie because it's a horror movie, not because it's about a movie. Yeah, this is scary. Oh, yeah, like a scary yeah. movie. Uh, Suspense. I, 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 would, I would say, no, especially if it has yeah. bad yeah. things in it besides that. It makes your whole movie crazy. So. Um, <laughs> okay. I have a question about angels. <clears throat> We're going to talk about oh. angels right now. Take a look at the sheet, okay? <laughs> angels, okay? Come on. Okay. Their existence is is a dogma of our faith. We can't doubt the angelic beings or existence. And uh, there's an order, if you remember one of the sheets I handed out about a hierarchy of being, okay? God, angels are pure spirits. We come under the angels. We are body, soul, matter, spirit, persons. Angels are persons that are pure spirits. Pure spirits with no matter. That's what angels are, but they're, they're not infinite. They are creatures. They are created by God. So they can die. <coughs> the existence of angels, spiritual, non corporeal beings. Non corporeal means no matter. Corpus means body in the Latin. So when you say non corporeal, you mean non bodily beings. They don't have matter, they're pure spirits. It's a truth of faith revealed in scripture and tradition. You can look it up in the catechism. Okay. Uh, it was defined, so no one could doubt it, by the Fourth Lateran Council, one of the big church councils in, uh, in 1215. Okay. Uh, because there were some people doubting it. Usually when the church defines a teaching, someone's doubting it. Like Arius was doubting Jesus was God, the Nicene Creed. They defined, you know, Jesus is God from God, light from light. The Lateran Council, because people were doubting the existence of angels, said angels are, are, are uh, matter revealed, um, faith revealed by God. Um, the opening line of Genesis, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Um, the heavens, according to our tradition, the great saints, include the angelic beings, okay? When God created the heavens, he created um, angelic beings as well. Now, when God created the angels, they weren't in heaven, properly speaking. They weren't in the presence of God yet. They had to be given a test of obedience before they were allowed to see God. We'll get to that. Okay. But the Apostles' Creed and the Nicene Creed, that we say at Mass every Sunday, all that is seen and unseen, we believe. Okay. We believe in everything seen and unseen. Unseen includes the angels. We can't see them. Angels can, with God's will, make themselves appear to us, but they take on some type of a form. And they can appear as a person. They can appear as, uh, as a warrior, as, as the angel appeared to Joshua uh, before uh, he led the Israelites seven times around the city of Jericho, okay? and uh, angels can appear uh, as, as human beings. They can appear in human form. Uh, that's the story of St. Augustine I told, walking along the shoreline, trying to figure out the Trinity, the child's taking water from the ocean, trying to put it in a hole, and Augustine says, what are you doing? You know, I'm put all this water into this little hole. You can't do that. Yeah, you can't put the infinite God in your finite mind. Augustine, that's what the boy said to him. Augustine's like, oh, I guess you're right. Walks a few feet, turns around, he's gone. So the understanding is that was an angel who appeared to tell Augustine, don't worry if you can't figure God out. You have a finite mind, you can't do it. Okay? So all that is seen and unseen, that is, that is uh, part of our creed. Credo means I believe. 
We believe in things that are unseen. Not only God, but the angelic beings as well. Okay? And um, the fourth Lateran Council teaches that at the beginning of time, God made angels and the earth ex nihilo. Ex nihilo means out of nothing. God created out of nothing. And afterward made man, who shares in both orders, the material order, the bodily order, the spiritual order. Uh, three orders of creation, pure spirit, angels, matter, and man. Uh, we're, we're that intermediate. Okay? We're not just matter, and we're not just spirit. We're a combination of both, which makes us unique. Hierarchy of being. Okay? Uh, even the pagan religions believe in angelic spiritual world. Plato, Aristotle, they believed that there were there were beings, intermediate beings between God and us. They just reasoned to this. It seems reasonable that there would be pure spiritual beings with intelligence. And uh, angel okay, means. You know what your name means? Um, well, yes, and, uh, but as I say here, angel is the name of an office, not their nature. Okay. We speak about angelic nature. Angels have the nature of an angel, but properly speaking, it, it concerns their office, and that's what it means, messenger. Okay. Uh, their nature is spirit, but their, their office is that of messengers of God. They're sent by God. That's what angels do. They're sent on to do things. Okay? And pure spirits like God, but this is a more philosophic thing. Okay? They have potency, which God does not. God is pure act, meaning angels can um, well, angels are self-sufficient beings. They're contingent beings. And they have potency, meaning they, they have the ability to change. God doesn't. God is, is pure act, uh, infinite, no, no beginning, no end. The angels are contingent beings. They're not, uh, they don't exist by their, own, by their own power. God brought them into existence, keeps them into existence. And like we have potency, we're, which is a philosophical term, meaning we, we have the ability to well, change, to grow in knowledge, uh, to grow from from a uh, uh, child uh, at conception, uh, a human embryo, to to an adult human being. Okay, uh, the angels have a potency too to to grow in say knowledge um, of of God and um, um, to to change in that sense. Okay, and they have intellects and free wills and. They surpass in perfection all visible creatures, including us. They're more powerful than us. Um, and when human beings see angels, they're usually in awe and reverence of them. We see this, I, I mentioned <coughs> St. John mistakenly falls down in worship in the book of Revelation before an angel. He's thinking it's God. That's how powerful the angels are if, we, if they manifest themselves to us. When the Blessed Virgin Mary had the Archangel Gabriel appear, she was frightened, St. Luke says, because this overpowering presence of the angel. Yes? Since it says angels have free wills, can they become demons? That's how they became demons. But like, like whenever it's beautiful. Well, they became demons. They were given a test of obedience before they were allowed to see God. Once you see God, you cannot depart from God. Once you're in heaven and you're in the presence of God, you can never sin. Why you have a free will because you're in the presence of God. But then, then does that mean you don't have a free will? No, you have a free will. You can always choose good and the better thing, okay? And always be choosing to love God, but you cannot sin. You cannot turn away from God because you're in the presence of God. Once you're in God's presence, you cannot sin. You cannot turn away from God. That's why Earth is the testing ground. Okay? We're given the test of obedience, whether we're going to obey God 
and if we, if we obey God on this earth, we will be rewarded with heaven. The saints, the angels of heaven, can never lose heaven. They can never fall out of heaven. The angels who exercise their free will in you know, disobedience to God, right at the beginning of their creation, they were given a test. Um, they lost heaven by their disobedience. They were never allowed to be in the presence of God. Never allowed to see God. The sight of God is the reward. Our minds are made for truth, intellect. Once we see God and we see the truth, we can never turn away from the truth. We, we possess God in heaven. God possesses us. You have a question. Um, did Adam and Eve see God? No. But how did uh, God, so God just kind of like was away and like created them? God kind of created them on earth. They, they were. They, they didn't were. actually see him, so that's why they were able to sin. Yes. I thought, I thought it says they walked with God. They walked with God, meaning they were obedient with God. They were they were in God's will, in God's love. That's what being walked with God means. They were in friendship with God until they sinned. Then they, once they exercised their free will and sinned, they weren't walking with God anymore. They lost friendship with God. That friendship could only be restored by God becoming man and paying the price for Adam's sin and all of our sins. So, yes. So, after that test, says angels see God, they can't sin. Can demons do good? No. No, they're, they're, they are in, uh, uh, in a, you could say, an eternal state of rebellion against God. So, like, they don't want So, so they're, they're, they're opposed to God. They, they hate God. They hate God. And, and God, in his providence, allows them to tempt us. But I, I'm going to get to demons in a minute. I've got to get through angels first. Okay, so just hold the questions, okay? Okay. Um, Angels have great intellects. Angels see gra and grasp things immediately. They don't have to reason things out. Two plus two equals four, work out math problems. They grasp things. Uh, it's, like, it's like us grasping the principle of non-contradiction. A thing cannot be and not be at the same time under the same circumstances. Okay? We see that immediately. You don't have to reason, you can't reason to that. That's how angels see everything. They understand everything. With just by, without going through a, a reasoning process. They have these great intellects. And <clears throat> if they sometimes appear as men, it's because they assume the form of a body to communicate with men. It, we have um, examples of this in the scriptures. Their wings signify rapidity of flight and movement. That's, that's how angels are portrayed. And it may come from, well, I think some of the descriptions in the scriptures um, you know, describe these, these winged creatures. Like the book of Isaiah uh, describes the wings on the angels. But properly speaking, they're pure spirits. They don't have wings. They don't have, they don't have faces. They don't have uh, bodies. What does that mean? We can't really grasp it. They, they can appear to have uh, you know, a face, uh, you know, wings to symbolize the rapidity of of flight. Angels can move from one end of the universe to another just by thinking about it. They, they don't have to um, go through any motion, uh, any uh, locomotive motion like we do. We have a body that weighs us down. Okay. But they're still like not as smart as God, right? Like not nearly as... They can't do. God is the creator. God is infinite. Angels have an angelic intellect, but it is finite. It's a creative intellect. They don't know everything. Yes? What makes it better than angels? We're not necessarily better than angels. Um, why angels why, really why would you say we're better than angels? Because, like, they, they, they just get, like, one choice, and then they can be with God or against God. Well, I'll, I'll they, explain that in like a minute. But right now, right now, we have to stand and pray the angels. Okay? 12 o'clock, okay? Take out your prayers, the Angelus. It will turn toward Christ on the cross. Okay? And because repetition is the mother of memory, I want you to memorize the Angelus just by repeating it every day. Okay? Repeat this for, for a couple of weeks, you'll have the Angelus prayer memorized. Okay? 
In the, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, Hail Mary, Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold, the handmaid of the Lord. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, <coughs> and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. We bend the knee, and the Word was made flesh. And Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Let us pray. For forth we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ, thy Son, was made known by the message of an angel. May by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Back to the angels. The creation and fall, that's what we're going to get to right now. Okay? So we'll answer your question, I think. All the angels were created, billions of them, in a state of sanctifying grace, meaning uh, they had a share in God's own life, in, in their being. And, like Adam and Eve were. And this gave them the right to get to heaven, to see God face to face, so to speak. Uh, but heaven is a reward for faithful love, for obedience. And the angels were tested soon after they were created. Uh, it's not revealed in the scriptures anywhere what the test was that the angels were given. Uh, there are different opinions put forward by theologians over the years. Uh, Federico Suarez, a Jesuit of the 16th century, uh, he surmised that God revealed the incarnation to the angels and revealed to them that they would have to worship the Son of God who became man. And that this idea was distasteful to some of the angels, especially the, the most beautiful and the most um, intelligent of the angels, who was Lucifer, uh, given that name, the light bearer. Um, and um, the idea of, of, see, the angels are of a higher order than us, the pure spirits, greater intellects. We are going to have to worship this God who becomes man, who takes on a human form, we're angels. No, no, we're not going to do that. That was the thinking of Satan. And uh, my own thought is that, that Satan was the first rationalist. He could not understand how God could become man while remaining God. So, his battle cry, we find it in the book of Jeremiah, non servia, which is like, for I will not serve, I will not obey. And we think that Satan took about a third of the angels with him, rebelled against God. And they were, they were prohibited from seeing God for, well, they, this, their rebellion against God, because of their, their heightened intellects, they knew with an absolute certainty that their rebellion against God was final. And yet they still did it. Their, their hard wills against God. So they knew that, that once they rebelled against God, there was no turning back. Because of their great intellects, they knew the severity of their rebellion. Not like us, where we can be sorry, God will forgive us, restore us to a state of grace. They had one, because of their great intellects, they had one opportunity, either you're going to obey or not obey. Either you're with me or against me. They chose to obey, eternally separated from God. So they are, are away from God. They never were allowed to see God. And this was, we think, the, the pride of Satan. Okay? Uh, I'll have to worship uh, you know, this, this God who becomes man. No. How can God become man? I think... Satan was a rationalist thinking, I don't understand how God could become man. I'm not going to worship something I can't understand. <coughs> you rebel. Okay. Um, the Franciscans 
hold that God also revealed that Satan would have to venerate the mother of this God who becomes man, the mother of Jesus. And that was even more distasteful to Satan. Because a pure creature, a pure human being, I, I have to honor and venerate. I'm, I'm uh, this great angel. No, I will not do this. And that's why we, from the book of Genesis, we see uh, the revelation uh, that um, I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your offspring and hers, and one translation is she will crush your head. And Mary crushes the head of the serpent Satan, who refused to submit to her son and and venerate her. Yes. But all this happened before humans existed. Um, right. Yes, they were God revealed to the angels what would what was going to happen. Okay. Um, that uh, you know, the, the, the human race uh, was going to rebel against God, okay? and and uh, and God was going to send a savior, God who became man, Jesus Christ, and the angels would have to worship the God Man because now he's in heaven. Jesus is worshipped as God in heaven. <coughs> and the angels have to worship him. That's what they rebelled against. Yes. So he showed them that. No, he didn't know that. Okay. This was this this after the separation took place. Okay, the Book of Revelation tells us that um, God cast the angels down to the earth. God, in His providence, allows the fallen angels to tempt us, and that temptation. Uh, it's just that. The, the fallen angels cannot force our wills, cannot force us to do anything evil. Yeah. We'll continue.